Hey, Supernatural Explorers. Welcome back. Let's try something a little different for episode 14. Let me know what you think. Saints, holy supernatural masters, at different times and from different spiritual paths, they have been known to perform extraordinary feats, miracles that scientists might say are impossible. What are these extraordinary feats, and how do they relate to what some report from their Sasquatch experiences? Find out on this episode of The Supernatural Explorer. While I'm getting ready to do the show, all these light bulbs start firing off in my head about Sasquatch and how he's very much like one of my heroes, one of my faves, one of the first people I ever read about that blew my child mind into the belief that, wow, magic is real. Look at this guy, Padre Pio. Reading about him when I was eight years old from a book called Strange Stories and Amazing Facts. I know I wrote a blog post on it once. Maybe I'll repost it to the webpage. Written about Padre Pio, the monk from Italy who lived, uh, I want to say 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, somewhere around there. Died in 1968, one month after I was born, he died. Now he's a saint. Loved and had a really good relationship with Jesus, Mary. And he had the stigmata, like legit. Doctors tested him out and stuff, and all these miraculous things would happen about him, healings and stuff. I started thinking about, wow, the things that happened with Padre Pio, where he's a saint, so at least the Catholic Church believes in this type of stuff happening. A whole religion believes in this type of stuff happening, such that they made this guy a saint. So that's a lot of people believing in something. What would Padre Pio do? Well, sometimes he was in one place, saying a Mass, Well, at the same time, he visited someone else halfway across the world, showed up to them, said a prayer for them, they healed, and he walked away and disappeared. Stuff like that was happening. So, wow, somebody appearing and disappearing? Who's that sound like? Sasquatch, same exact thing. So I'm like, wow, that's the same. They say that Padre Pio barely ate. And he was a robust guy. He was uh, no skinny mini. He was robust. Barely ate to drink anything. And I've heard people talking on other podcasts, people who know a lot, way more than me, talking about Sasquatch and where they see both sides and they're like, but a Sasquatch j- just as physical and he isn't supernatural. How does he sustain himself? And the answer to that is answered in the Padre Pio belief. It's answered in the same thing. There have been saints. There's some other saint from Europe. I think it was a woman And she didn't eat anything, I don't think. If she's not a saint, she should be. That's pretty miraculous. So you have a saint woman who's not eating anything. At the same time, you got... Padre Pio's eating very little, and he's robust. This woman is not eating at all, and she's alive. It doesn't matter what she is. That she's alive is a miracle. Shows what is possible. So Sasquatch doesn't need the diet of an 800-pound gorilla. It needs the diet of a saint. 
That's what it needs the diet of. What else are the similarities? Ah, <laughs> this one's a humorous one. People would sometimes just smell Padre Pale and not see him. And what do you smell like? Perfume and flowers. People sometimes smell Sasquatch too, but don't see him. But Sasquatch doesn't smell like perfume and flowers. But it's the same phenomena. So there's a lot of, drawn a lot of similarities between Sasquatch and Saints and Padre Pale. Oh, another similarity. Ah, this one's great. Remember, I talked about toothpaste in the lungs, a physical thing where no doubt if someone took an x-ray, someone would be like, I'm not sure, but that looks like a glob of toothpaste in your lungs. Physical thing. Could have been picked up on an x-ray. I wasn't coughing despite that that was a physical thing. I hypothesized that my vibration was elevated just to notch up where that didn't matter. Padre Pio, I remember because I loved him my whole life, but really got into him in my 30s where I was reading books like crazy about him. And I remember this one story. Girl had something messed up with her legs, which couldn't walk right or couldn't walk, period. Went to see Padre Pio. She was healed. She could walk again. Doctors x-rayed her legs. Her legs were the same as they were before, but she could walk again regardless. Physical thing wasn't changed, elevated to a state where that doesn't matter anymore. So there's a, a same trick, same, oh, you got this physical thing? We're going to make it so that, that doesn't matter anymore. And Sasquatch did it for me. Then it started firing off other things in my head because now I'm thinking about belief. I'm on about belief. Ah, you know from my pandemonium episodes what appeared for me out of nowhere. So I'm thinking about belief and how things can appear out of nowhere. And other times things appeared out of nowhere. I know I told the story of a bobbin appearing out of nowhere in my sewing machine. That was without a doubt that appeared. I also mentioned in another show how when Yogananda's mom was praying, a charm appeared in her hand. That charm, my charm from Pandemonium, the dove charm, the sewing machine bobbin, and all the gifts left for people that they believe are from Sasquatch, though they never witnessed the giver, are all similar. Gifts appearing as if from nowhere. And the sewing machine bobbin, That happened after I read Autobiography of a Yogi. Because I read that book, I believed every word I read. And similar things like Padre Pio, people not eating that much, sustaining, healings, bilocations, people appearing and disappearing. Like Yogananda's master, and I'm not even going to attempt to say his name. I could see his face. I know what he stood for, what kind of spirit he was, what kind of man he was, what kind of guru he was, what kind of mentor, master he was. Know all that. So I'm not going to butcher his name. I know it's with a Y. (laughs) After he died, he appears physically to Yogananda, the author of the book, the yogi. That's one of the things that happened. Appearing and disappearing, seemingly from nowhere. Same thing as Sasquatch. This is a supernatural thing, a paranormal thing, a spiritual thing, a thing of science that exists that we didn't know exists. This is real. This is happening to people. And because I believe that, within a week, something appeared as if out of nowhere for me to show me your belief is right. And we're paying off your belief by showing you it's right. Here, we're going to make something appear for you. One foot in front of your face. You're not going to see it appear, but when you look for it, you're going to know it appeared. Amazing stuff. So I start thinking about Yogananda's master And then I remember what he wrote. So Yogananda's master appears to him and he's telling him stuff. This I have to consult. And this just got me so excited. This is the spiritual meets the paranormal people. This is where it's all coming together. Such exciting stuff. So Yogananda's guru master appears to him. And he tells him this. Because he's telling him about the secrets of the universe. He's moved on. He was already beyond his years Definitely came down just to help people. Probably didn't have to come back here. Probably could have ascended lifetimes ago to another plane of existence. Came down, mentored some people. Was now on a new plane of existence. One way you can appear to your followers and then disappear. Somebody who can do that may know a few things. So this is what he says to Yogananda. 
amongst other things. The ordinary astral universe is peopled with millions of astral beings who have come, more or less recently, from the earth, and also with myriads of fairies, mermaids, fishes, animals, goblins, gnomes, demigods, and spirits, all residing on different astral planets in accordance with karmic qualifications. Various spheric mansions or vibratory regions are provided for good and evil spirits. Good ones can travel freely, but the evil spirits are confined to limited zones. In the same way that human beings live on the surface of the earth, worms inside the soil, fish in water, and birds in air, so astral beings of different grades are assigned to suitable vibratory quarters. And it is all subtle, isn't it? After you go beyond the physical. And Sasquatch already sees, because he gets to go beyond the physical whenever he feels like it. Wouldn't you want to learn that lesson? Wouldn't you want to learn from that being? Then there was the story of the photograph. Yogananda's master's master was in a group picture. They wanted to take a picture of him with all his disciples, all his followers, him in the middle. Guy takes the picture. Old school camera. No phones where you can look at it right away. (laughs) Snaps the picture. Has it developed. Everyone appears except the master. Not there. Totally not there. Like he's disappeared. Like he's invisible. The confused photographer goes to the guru. And the guru explains. I am spirit. Can your camera reflect the omnipresent invisible? Come then tomorrow morning. I will pose for you. This is very similar to some people's Sasquatch experiences. Particularly the famous cloaking video. If you've seen that, and it looks like predator type cloaking, where you can barely see it, the people who were there and happened to be looking that way did see it. So they're seeing it with their eyes, but the camera can't capture it really. And this is the same thing that's happening here with this guru. Another example. I remember I mentioned on an episode, Tobe from Strangebrow was on another podcast. And he's talking about an expedition party he had that was going to go up a mountain. And they were going to go Sasquatching. Looking out for Sasquatch. And one by one, most of them especially the ones who were carrying guns, were turned away by some type of mind control. This reminds me of a story right out of Autobiography of a Yogi. Yogananda is staying with his master at this point, or at least at his master's house a lot, learning from him. And he's growing his master these beautiful cauliflower because I guess his master loves cauliflower. But Yogananda has an issue where he keeps forgetting to lock the master's house and the master wants to teach Yogananda a lesson. So (laughs) Yogananda grows these beautiful cauliflowers, harvests them, brings them into the house, forgets to lock the house. His master's not home at the time, omniscient, knowing what's going on, what's happening. His master influences the mind of someone who's not otherwise using their mind, just a wanderer, wayfarer type of person directs the person into his own house to steal the cauliflower and leave. Yogananda, needless to say, learned his lesson (laughs) about locking the doors. That is the same to me as Sasquatch influencing people's minds. They don't want people with guns coming on the expedition to see them. They'll influence their minds to act in strange ways, wanting to throw their guns away, wanting to turn around and acting irrationally. Same exact thing for me. It's not mind control. I think it's mind influence. And then the final parallel, the final comparison I had, then leads into a personal story. When Yogananda was eight years old, he got a bad case of cholera, such that the doctor said, we can't do anything for you. And I looked on Wikipedia, and there's different kinds of cholera. But if it gets to the point where it's severe and the doctors can't do anything for you, which it sounds like Yogananda had from his experience, that kills about 50% of its victims. Yogananda is really weak, doesn't look good for him. 
his mom comes to him and has a picture of her guru and says, here, focus on him and bow mentally to him. I know you're too weak to do anything else. Just bow in your mind. Yogananda does as his mom asks, wakes up the next day's healed. Now, the bow mentally part, I totally get. I totally understand that. And this is what leads into my story. Personal experience with Jen, me, and my Sasquatch spirit that I connect with. Listen out for the parts specifically where I have to, in quotes, bow mentally or none of the magic works. If you follow my other podcast, Now That's Nonsense, you would have learned that Jen got sick. She got this cough. Our friend Devlin had it. He was two days ahead of Jen, so we knew what was going to happen with Jen by what was happening with Devlin. It quickly turned into a cough where it's one of those annoying colds, which is better than the flu. Like the flu you have 24-7. This was just a bad cold, meaning when you wake up in the morning, it's bad. But then an hour into waking up or so, it starts to become where almost like you're not even sick. You know you're sick, but you still function. You're not all coughing and snotty or anything like that. And then as the sun goes down, it seems, it comes back upon you and the, and the coughs start catching up to you again. And this was happening to Jen. She was coughing from like six, seven o'clock well into the night, sleepless nights, coughing, coughing, coughing. It was annoying for her, dry cough that wasn't producing anything. So just a cough that hurts you. It's horrible. Just annoying. And... She tried Dayquil, NyQuil, Robitussin, liquid gels of Dayquil, and actually drinking it, and and NyQuil both ways. And then we felt, all right, let's, we better try the Mucinex. She tried Mucinex, nothing affected her at all, in the least, not even a slight. You know how sometimes you take, I don't know if you, I call them the Wawa's, if you take NyQuil, I always know like a half hour after taking the liquid, I get these wah wah. It's like my brain is waving into sleep and I can feel it waving into sleep and it makes like this womp in my head. Uh, She didn't get any of that and she normally gets that. It's like this cold was stiff arming everything and just came in and wasn't going to react to the normal stuff. Was it going to do what was it going to do? One night she's laying in bed coughing. I think this is the first night she took the Mucinex. She's laying in bed coughing. And I put my hands on her to give a Reiki on her back because she was facing away from me. And I immediately felt tingles on my fingers, which caught my surprise. So I kept my hands there. And I'd say about 30 seconds to a minute in, she stopped coughing. Like magic. So I was laying there and I don't even know if she realized it. I think as soon as she stopped coughing, she started to pass out because it was probably like finally like being tortured enough. So she was at least twilighty. I have my hands on the back and I have them there 20 minutes, a half. I'm not taking them off. She's coughing. I head off for hours, sleepless nights. Like I'm not taking my hands off her back. But then half hour goes by, 45 minutes. I stop falling asleep. As I'm falling asleep, my shoulder's hurting just from having the hand that's higher up on her back, my right hand. My shoulder starts hurting like really bad. Like I don't know how much longer I can hold it. And I'm falling asleep. And I decided, let me just, I'll take a break and then I'll put my hands back up again. I took my hands off her back to take a break. The second I took my hands off her back, she started coughing again. It's like the craziest thing. I wish I would have thought to prop a pillow between my arms or uh, maybe I just could have glued my hands to her back (laughs) and fell asleep so then my arms can slump. But it was painful to hold my arms there. I couldn't keep it up. It wasn't sustainable. I did it as much as I could. I think I fell asleep with my hands on her back in some way, even if one of them slumped off. And she had a pretty good night that night. That was great. So I was thinking the next night, I'll do that again. But I'm thinking, that's not really sustainable. I can't hold the position. Her cough doesn't just happen when we're lying in bed and I can have my hands on her back. She's coughing for hours before that and hours in the morning. So I can't... (laughs) I can't follow around with my hands on her back. It's just not practical. And it's not for lack of love. It's just not a practical, sustainable thing to do. So it's daytime. She's going to try the music again, even though it did absolutely nothing. 
She's going to try it again anyway. And she's just chilling, relaxing, reading her Ayurvedic stuff. I'm buzzing around the house doing chores, molding, whatever, whatever. And I pass her once and she goes, there's a car alarm going off outside. It's winter here. We're spending the day inside. It wasn't a windy day. Nothing really was going on. There weren't too many people out. I was like, oh. She goes, yeah, I don't know where it's coming from. I'm like, okay. And I can just go back to whatever I'm doing. Ten minutes later, I come upstairs and she goes, that car alarm's going off again. So I look out the window, I look to the left, to the right, in front, like the immediate 20, 30, 40 feet. And then I start looking down the block, up the block, down this other block, in driveways, looking for lights, blinking something. It's like three, four o'clock. It's still light out. I don't see anything. I'm like, huh. And it sounds far away. It doesn't sound close. 20 minutes later, buzzing around the house again, and the doorbell rings. That doorbell never rings unless it's... UPS or FedEx dropping off a package. And it's our neighbor. Hey, what's up? You know your alarm keeps going off. What? And I look over her shoulder and Jen's car's in the driveway. It's normally in the garage. I was painting stuff in the garage, so I had it out in the driveway. And her alarm's going off. Lights, everything. I'm like, wow, thanks. Shut it off. Now, I don't know why. Maybe because it's I do these shows and I think about this stuff a lot. The first thought that comes into my head is, oh, that was Sasquatch. Sasquatch is trying to get our attention. And because I'm doing these shows and I'm more familiar with this stuff, I didn't think the thought crazy. I thought it amusing. I'm like, oh, that's funny. He's trying to get our attention. But then I, the practical side of me looks online because we live in the suburbs. Uh, if we lived by a national forest in Washington State, <laughs> then maybe, maybe that wouldn't be so weird. But... We live in the suburbs, like Custer County, Pennsylvania. And there was no reason for the alarm. It wasn't windy, nobody was around the car, no zero reason for the alarm. Except Sasquatch, in my head. Pull the car in the garage, go on Google, type in the make of the car, the model, put in the symptoms, and it says two things come up on multiple websites. Either your battery is running low, and that's somehow triggering the alarm, or there's something, the hood the switch that tells if the hood's closed or not is going faulty and so maybe thinks the hood's open and the alarm's going off. I read about those two things. I'm like, oh, those are practical. That makes sense. That could be. And at this point, the car's in the garage. And the whole time I'm looking that up and reading about that and just doing other stuff is a half an hour. And the alarm was going off every 10, 20 minutes outside and it wasn't windy or anything, so there's virtually no difference between outside and inside. Nobody was near the car, nobody, nothing like that. So if it was the battery or the hood, it would have done it in the garage, too. And it's not doing it in the garage. And it's in hours, two hours, three hours is going off, and it's still not going off in the garage. So now I'm like, all right, Kurt, you can, uh, you can think the thoughts you wanted to think. All right, so Sasquatch is getting my attention. Why does Sasquatch want my attention? <laughs> Because now I feel like I did the practical stuff. The alarm didn't go off again. And the thoughts are ready. The alarm went off for me to get the thought in my head. And the thought was already in my head. So the alarm didn't have to go off anymore. This is how I see everything. So I'm like, why does Sasquatch want my attention? I immediately remember that when I had a cough, toothpaste lodged in my lungs, Sasquatch came into my head then too. And he took care of that for me until I coughed it up. Brought me peace. So I'm like, huh. If Sasquatch worked for me from a distance, maybe Sasquatch can work from Jen from a distance. And if I connect the two of them from a distance together and hold that, I can hold that somewhere in my mind and just a place in my mind, hold that connection. And that's very sustainable. I could fall asleep holding that and doing that and fall asleep like that. It's a lot easier to do. Doing any kind of physical anything over time will cause stress strain. Holding a thought in your mind, a gentle thought in your mind, say it's a prayer for somebody. Holding that, just holding it in your mind, you can probably use 1% of your brain to hold it. And if you have enough focus, you can hold that throughout the day, kind of keep it going. It's sustainable. It's possible. So I'm like, oh, this is great. I'm definitely going to connect with Sasquatch, see what I can do from a distance. So Jen goes to bed and I don't tell Jen. This is the area of I know she wants help in healing and she's open to it. If I tell her where 
I think it's coming from, that actually might close her to it. So why say anything? Somebody's asking for help and you're giving them help. I don't think it matters where it comes from. As long as it comes from a good place, a truly good place. That's all that matters, in my opinion. She goes into bed to lay down, not to go to sleep. She's coughing. She's been coughing for hours and she's still coughing. She took the mucinex hours ago. It's still not doing anything. I come in. I set all my equipment up because I think I'm going to do a show. I think I'm going to get into my state, connect with Sasquatch, connect with Jen, talk about it while it's happening. So I'm thinking, all right, I got to get this down. I want to record this. I lay down to get into my zone. I connect with the Sasquatch who I feel like was not impatiently waiting for me. I wouldn't go that far, but he was waiting for me as he was expecting me. And how do I know that? It's because when I went to connect with them, I just had to start to think about it and right with me, instant connection. So to me, that's like, oh, all right, that was him. By the way, let's uh, give a preview for the end of the show. When I'm all done telling my story of Sasquatch Heels, we're going to connect from a distance. We're going to be asked to be connected with what set the car alarm off. Now, I'll either feel nothing, in which case I will believe it. I'll get the battery of the hood thing checked. But if I feel a spirit, I will know if I'm feeling a spirit. And I'll know if I'm feeling my Sasquatch, because I know what my Sasquatch feels like. Slightly bigger than my 8x8 room and all the trimmings. (laughs) And I have my new ways of describing energies. I don't have that list in front of me. I want to do this without lists or outlines. I just want to do this on the fly. So at the end of the show, we'll find out, was it Sasquatch? Wasn't it Sasquatch? But it doesn't matter. Everything's set in motion at this point. Laying there. Sasquatch is waiting for me. Instant connection. Boom. Energy feels great. Connect with Jen's energy. The second, maybe two seconds after we connected with Jen's energy, I got the sense of, thank you, Kurt. Now get out of the way. <laughs> and I'll tell you why exactly why I say that and why, how I know that was true. Felt the work being done in all I can describe as magical ways. And why were they magical ways? My energy was felt different than it ever felt before. It was moving in different ways that I hadn't felt before. And I wouldn't know how to do this or have any experience with this. And I felt it being done. And if I thought even a word like, wow, because it was wow worthy. My word in my head set a vibration off in my head that threw the whole shebang off. And so from the action as to what was happening, I knew get out of the way because you say even wow in your head, you're going to throw the whole thing off and then you got to take 5, 10, 15 seconds to let it all rebalance, realign, and get, get into action again and for you to get out of the way again. So... I at first heard it when I made the connection, not heard it, felt it with every fiber of my being in a polite way, but in a, like, all right, get out of the, all right, get out of the way. I got this. And then anytime I got a little excited or thought a, any word, it threw it off. I'd say after all the bouncing happen on all these different levels and all this stuff. And I probably interrupted it four or five, six times unintentionally just because I got excited or I, I said a word in my head or something happened. I noticed it. Silence. I couldn't hear anything. And I knew from that space there was no way I was getting up and recording a show. That was not happening. I couldn't move. couldn't think. I, I couldn't blink. And it worked. And Jen was not coughing anymore. And as long as I held it, she didn't cough. And I held it as long as I could till I fell asleep. And as I started to fall asleep and my mind started to think fun things on its own because I'm losing my steadiness on it, my grip on it. And it starts to just like go blah, blah, blah and start to think stuff. As soon as that went off, I heard a cough inside. The cough woke me up and I realized I lost my grip, and I'd go back in again. I did that a few times. But Jen's now getting nice chunks of sleep, actual sleep and rest. And enough of those chunks happen when she slept for the night. It's beautiful. Undeniable. Great. Wonderful. 
She wakes up the next morning. She's a little coffee, but a little less coffee than she was in other days. And she comments on what a good night's sleep she had. And I even record her. I still don't want to tell her. I'm going to do it again. I still don't want to tell her. Sasquatch helped you. <laughs> I don't want to make her closed to the whole thing at all. I know she's open to healing and healing is coming. So that's all she's got to know. I hear her talking to someone on the phone. I happen to hit record on my laptop. Not the best recorder. I'll jack it up, but I'll play what she says. I feel like I slept through most of the night without coffee. So uh, that's a win. So you know how well that went. So now I know I'm going to do it again. And I'm like, all right, I did it laying down once. I'm setting up the equipment again. This time I'm going to do it sitting up. I started out sitting up and I couldn't do it. Even that I learned it and was most relaxed laying down, I couldn't even sit up and do it. I wasn't, it was only my second night. It was like an advanced move. And I know it was an advanced move because I couldn't do it. I couldn't be focused on, all right, am I sitting up straight or... Am I holding my legs in place or are they wanting to fall out a little more? Like if you think about it, there's probably subconsciously a lot of things involved in just sitting up. Laying down is, you know, that's why in Stranger Things, Elle has to lay down in that pool. (laughs) She gets me. She feels me. She knows what I'm saying. So I tried to do the show and I had to lay down. Jim was coughing. I had off, abandoned that plan. I immediately go lay on the floor. I get in the zone. But it was hard because sitting up threw me off, but then I was laying down and I was slightly thrown off by by that I couldn't do it sitting up. And that messed me up a little because I'm like, I can't be thinking anything. I got to, this is not the time for constructive criticism, man. You got to shut up. You got to shut the front door, get out of the way and let the magic happen again. And eventually did and it happened again. Another great night's sleep. I actually... (laughs) That was crazy because I fell asleep into it, but somehow held it. And I woke up two hours later on my meditation floor. And it's only a rug and it's not a particularly shaggy rug. And I'm an older guy. Like I woke up in pain. My neck was stiff. My whole body was stiff. I I had to like peel myself slowly off the floor. And if I was a like any kind of machine, I would have had to put oil in my gears. Like it because that's what it felt like to get up off the floor. But she wasn't coughing, and I went to bed again in bed, making sure I held it. Sasquatch, two for two on the healing. I'm very impressed with my friend, one of my latest mentors. So now, third night, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it again. But this time, I feel like it's time, because Jen is saying, like, wow, I'm getting better night's sleep. I'm feeling better. So this night, I'm going to tell her. So we're in bed and I tell her and where I think the healings come from and what's going on. And she can't deny what's been going on. And she fully was totally 100% cool about it where she was totally down for me trying it again. And she even wanted to put on some meditation music while I did it. So I'm like, oh, this is great. Now she fully knows what's going on. She's fully open. I'm going to lay in bed in my comfortable bed with meditation music on and totally be able to do it next to her. And she, <laughs> she she puts on this meditation. And it's a guided meditation with words. Now, that's fine. I'm pretty good at zoning things out. If we're in a restaurant and there's, say there's a baby screaming. Or there's kids like being really loud and screamy. I cannot notice it until somebody points it out to me. Uh, one of the gifts of introversion. <laughs> so, but... The meditation she puts on is so profound. To me, she was speaking in the meditation directly to how to relate with Sasquatches. And that's not what it was about. But if you believe and you're keeping your eyes open and you're looking for signs and looking for Sasquatch and looking for synchronicities, like car alarms and ideas coming into your head and trying out things that are actually working that seem magical then this meditation was so crazy, which made me laugh because now I'm, yes, I'm, I got a, a, like a bonus. I achieved the connection while I was on the floor and I was able to allow all this to flow and make the connection work. And now I've been laying in bed. That's easier. 
this is going to be great, this is going to be easy. But now there's a meditation on that I'm really interested in and I'm seeing fascinated synchronicity type stuff. And I'm not allowed to think anything or emote anything. I can only hear it. I can absorb it, but I can't think about it, if that makes any sense. So it's like a new level of test. And I actually laugh because I'm like, every night I've been tested. First night it was allowed to happen. And I was tested to keep your thoughts good while something exciting's happening. And the second night I was tested with try and do it sitting up. Ah, you can't do it sitting up yet. You didn't quite achieve that yet. Lay down again. Oh, and don't think about how the sitting up didn't work either. All right, go. And then the third night, oh, good job. You were allowed to lay in bed now and be comfortable. Whoop, whoops, we'll put this on. Surprise, try and overcome and balance yourself while you hear these fun things. Like, it, it, to me, looking through my eyes, it's exactly how I see all of it. Was able to table it because I could listen to it again another day. And that's the trick. It's not like some guy was in town and walking through town and I had to listen to him then or I was never going to hear the words again. I could listen to it tomorrow. So that made it easy to go and zone that out, connect. I honestly can't remember how long it took. Half hour, let's just say. And then from there, Jen's just been pretty healthy. I felt like that was the last night of her cough. And I can't even remember if she took Mucinex or not that night because, let's face it, nothing was working. Didn't matter. So, crazy, crazy, crazy story all around. Sasquatch is supernatural. Sasquatch is spiritual. Sasquatch is scientific. They just haven't figured it out yet. And they're going to be the last ones to figure it out because some people already know. Some people want to know, believe and want to know. They need to see it for themselves. They got to touch. They got to feel. Now that we've heard from my little stories and dissertation on the supernatural meets the spiritual and all the overlaps and how they really are exactly the same thing as science too, science. All right. Let's see who set that car alarm off. Without further ado, the spirit team, my friends, my colleagues, my mentors, Please connect me with, (laughs) there is something coming in already. While I'm talking, I can feel my energy. My energy has been still the whole time I've been talking. Just sitting still, talking from that space, high vibration, excitement, but still balanced and still the whole time. I'd say about 25% down from a chill. So not enough to make a chill through my body, but that kind of like light, blissful, joyful energy. As I started talking, saying, all right, spirit team, connect me to, I felt my energy starting to move. It was coming from around me, in coming into my energy field, got like 50% in, didn't populate my body yet, just when I started to talk. So it was something. Now let's find out what it was. I had to say that because it was like, wow, it wasn't just something. It's something that wants to make itself known. Let's see who helped us, and let's see who helped to make the show more fun. Here we go. Who is it? And what do they say on game shows? And let's see who's behind curtain number one. I'm so amazed, and if I bet money, I would have got it wrong. If I didn't bet money, I would have got it wrong. If there was a multiple choice of 10 choices and this was one of the choices, I wouldn't have guessed it at all. Did you have a guess? How many of you, raise your hand if you guessed Sasquatch. All right, yeah, most of you, good. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's where it felt like it was going for me. If I could sway my energy, that's the way I would have pushed it. If I'm subconsciously swaying my energy, that's the way I would have pushed it. it seemed obvious. If I'm a psychological study, I'd say 70% of me was thinking it was going to be Sasquatch. of me was thinking it was going to be Mary. And you know why if you've been following along. I thought it might be Mary, which would have been a great fun tie-in. And 5% of me thought, you know, maybe Padre Pio because he come up on the show. Maybe 0.00 whatever's left. I know there's nothing really left mathematically. But the sprinkles on top. Maybe Yogananda's master because he got a tie-in. Yogananda maybe. But I haven't connected with them spiritually one-on-one. How would I know their energy if it came in? But this energy, I'm pretty sure I know. And I'll tell you why I know. 
It is, and he's appeared before, anybody guess it? Archangel Uriel. If anybody guessed that one, I want to hear from you because you're tapped into the nth degree. You know it or you don't know it. The energy came in when I closed my eyes. Yes, as I'm about to say it. Final answer, Archangel Uriel. I felt the energy populate my spine uniform, evenly. Everything became brighter, but my spine became brighter. Totally lined up, perfectly balanced, light and bright and airy and higher vibration than me. And Uriel, I believe I said on another episode recently, in my experience, works with people's energy columns in their spine at an energetical level. So if there's going to be some kind of leveling up that needs to occur and the person's not quite ready to level up and they need training wheels and they need assistance and they deserve to level up even though they're not ready to handle it yet, something like that. Will you believe in someone and you give them a promotion and you're not quite sure they're going to make it or not, but you're going to fully support them and try your best to make sure they make it and you make sure they make it. I feel like Uriel does that. He takes people who are maybe a little unsure of themselves but ready to level up. He slaps like this column around their spinal column, this energetical light. Sometimes I see them as bright silver or bright gold and puts them around their columns and holds them for them so that their energy can populate their energy column. Light can go into their spinal column and it won't be thrown off. Light came in and lit up my spinal column in such a straight and balanced way that I never felt before. A new kind of balance. What kind of balance? The kind of balance I learned from connecting with the Sasquatch energy. The kind of balance that you need to have an energy flow through you, move out of the way, let it flow to one of your loved ones, and to help heal them. So, thank you, Archangel Uriel. Anyone who's feeling the show, I really appreciate you. And I now know that I do the show for you, because I was sitting in that, and it's literally divine. And I come out to tell you what's going on. So I'm going to go back in there, because it's wonderful. And then I'll wrap up the show. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, I'll be back in five seconds. Did you ever hear the Pleiadians? I don't know if I'm saying it right. I'm sure it's Pleiadians or something. I like to say Palladian because it just rolls off the tongue better. And if you're like me, I don't care what you call me, as long as it's good intentions and it's a nice thing. People have messed up my name my whole life. I've been called Craig, Gregory, uh, anything. (laughs) If people call me in a nice way, I don't care what people call me. So, Palladians. I don't think they care. They're more evolved. Look, if you believe in ETs, you're going to love the Palladians. They're the way you want ETs to be. ETs... If you're on the fence about ETs, wouldn't you want them to appear to you like Thor? Like if Thor was an ET somehow, wouldn't you want an ET to appear to you like that? Like, who are you? You just flew out of the sky. You were just beamed out of the sky. I am Thor. I am an ET. Wouldn't that be a little more palatable for some people? So to me, that's like the Palladians. They look like us more. But I learned about the Palladians... A while ago, from one of my friends, one of my psychic friends, she turned me on to them. I was when I was uh, amping up pre-distance skills, been amping up working with my spiritual team, just about to get into my distance skills. And she said, the Palladians really want to help you with your spiritual work. So I connected with them and I let them, I think I just came to the realization I was connecting with my spiritual team. That's a practice of connecting with things from a distance. And then when I had my team in place, was that why it was easy to connect with a person from a distance? Huh, that makes logical sense. It's very interesting. So I connected with the Pleiadians. I felt them ground me to the core of the earth. The first time I connected with them, I felt them grab my energy and I felt like there was two of them, male and female. I felt like they grabbed my left foot, my right foot, and took my energy, my grounding, and just took it way down into like the molten core solidness of the earth. So I was like, wow, hello, Palladians. I like you guys and girls. You're on my team, sign me up. So they've been on my spirit team since. 
So when I went in for Archangel Uriel again, I felt the Pleiadians because I felt my the energy in my feet going down to the earth. Now, whatever level of vibration I was at, I balanced out there and I haven't felt all these peeps in a while. They all helped me out. They helped me all get me where I was cruising for a while, where I did work for three years. But now I'm being shown new things. The Sasquatch and the belief in Sasquatch teaches new things. New levels of vibration, which are harder to balance the higher they go up, the harder they are to balance. So now Uriel, it makes sense from a spiritual lesson kind of way. Uriel set the alarm off to get my attention, to make me think of Sasquatch, for me to try it out, for me to experience a new level of vibration, to see how it heals and helps people, to then practice this new level of vibration. And since it's a new level of vibration, and I'm going to need help again balancing, I'm going to need a new set of training wheels. Uriel's here, got my attention. Palladians are here again. If you're still with me, isn't this a fun ride? If you're not, I hope you enjoyed the, the show that you did get to hear. All right, where are we going from here? Well, I couldn't have thunk a better segue if I dreamed it. <laughs> did somebody mention goblins? Did I hear goblins mention? Whoop, goblins. Could have sworn I heard goblins mention. I could have sworn in talking us about Sasquatch and divine things and Padre Pio and everything wonderful in reading about Yogananda's master and him appearing from spirit into the physical for Yogananda, him mentioning goblins. And also with myriads of fairies, mermaids, fishes, animals, goblins, gnomes, demigods, and spirits. Yes, next episode. I've seen one half hour of season one of Hellier. I know I'm very late to the party. I'm very thankful to Conspiranormal for announcing at the beginning of one of the shows that I'm dying to listen to, but now I have to wait for them announcing spoiler alerts on Hellier. Thank you, Conspiranormal. I really appreciate you guys. I listened to a half hour of Hellier and light bulbs started firing off in my head. What light bulbs? Why? What am I up to? Well, tune in the next show where it's going to be called The Goblins of Hellier. (laughs) Great having you. Till next time, everyone. Peace.